Hello everyone, welcome back to another how-to video from Freedom Marine. My name is Dick Veer, we're joined once again by Alex today from Revolution Yacht Experience. The topic for today is to uh, understand how to operate the Webasto diesel heater on board your Axobar 37. It's a very simple video to follow along with, so join us once again as Alex leads us. Okay, so we're aboard the 37XE Axopar right now, and much like all systems, we usually start by turning the power on the boat on. So just in front of the captain's chair here, you have those four switches. So the service battery, we're gonna turn that one on, as that's the one we need. And this uh, device only requires that one service bank to be on, and uh, that's all. So once we do that, we'll notice that this display here will light up, and there'll be a white light illuminated underneath the power button. So by just touching that power button once, you'll see that it turns green and will start to flash. That, indicate that uh, indicates that it's going through a startup procedure. We'll talk a little bit more soon about all the features that are inside of this panel, but for now we'll just let it go through its startup sequence and I'll talk a little bit about where all the, uh, where all the outlets are located along the boat and how the system works in general. So the Webasto heating system is essentially uh, a heat exchanger. Um, you, you have a, a, an aluminum block with fins on it, essentially, and it's, and it's fully self-contained. On the inside, you'll have diesel that is dropped onto a gauze, and there will be a flame front on the inside creating and generating heat inside. So that's how the heat is generated inside this block. Uh, and then on the outside of the block, you'll have a fan, which is drawing in fresh air from the atmosphere. There will be vents on the outside of the vessel that draws it inside to the, uh, the space in the hull. And it'll pull that air in and it will blow it over the top of this hot aluminum brick, let's call it, and then it'll blow uh, hot air out the other side. Uh, the combustion that takes place inside this brick will exit that chamber and then head out the exhaust. I'll show you uh, a little bit later on where it's located on both a 37XC Axopar and a 28 Axopar. So you can be aware of the safety concerns with having a hot exhaust uh, exhausting uh, on the outside of your vessel because there are some very real safety concerns there. So you do want to be aware of those, um, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. So once that hot air leaves the, um, uh, the heat exchanging um, area of the Webasto unit, uh, it'll come into the boat through a series of ductwork. Each vessel will change a little bit depending on what you're on. So a 28 is obviously very different to a 37. And then the various configurations on a 37, the ducting and the ductwork will change a little bit as well. But one common thing you'll find is that there's always going to be something up near the, uh, up near the dash. I think the best feature of having our Webasto heating system on your boat is that if you close as many vents as possible and, and try and get most of the air coming out here at your at your helm on your window, it'll really help you be able to see out that window on a rainy wet day, right? So generally the, the condensation that builds up on the windows from all the breathing and if you're walking in out of the rain, you do have uh, moisture that's trapped inside your clothing. Um, as soon as you enter you know, a warmer, drier area, that moisture wants to leave your clothing and then it sticks to usually windows. So running that Webasto system, the moment you get on your boat and getting it as warm as possible, as fast as possible is highly recommended. So uh, if I'm running a boat uh, that time of year, I'll typically fire it up straight away and then I'll go and do the rest of my things like loading my boat up, you know, tending to my family and, and their needs or whoever your guests are on board, if there are any, uh, you know, having a look at the lines, unhooking power, all that kind of stuff can happen uh, while your Webasto unit is heating up. So without further ado, I'll end this one here and, uh, and I'll show you some of the ductwork around the boat. Okay, so the model of 37XC Axo part that we're in today is the bench version. So it doesn't have the aft cabin, but if you are in a 37XC Axopar aft cabin, then you have entry down into that area from here. Um, so both port and starboard side will have a vent uh, back here and you can open and close those as you need to. Uh, if you're not back there and don't need heat back there and would like to divert it somewhere like the windows, for example, um, then you know go ahead and close those vents and uh, concentrate all the power and the heat into this cabin area where you need it. So some other areas that you're going to find them is in this main cabin space. Uh, there's going to be two on the port side down low and there's going to be one on the starboard side down low and already discussed is the ones in front of the windows doing the lion's share of keeping that, uh, keeping that moisture uh, from condensing on that window so you can see out and hopefully have a safer, uh, safer experience out on the water during a wet rainy day. After, uh, after this little session here, I'm gonna take you into the forward cabin and uh, we're gonna talk about where the, uh, where the vents are in that location too. 
Okay, before we go into the fluid cabin, I want to just stop right here. Uh, we, we're in the head and there's two Abasto vents above my head. There's one here on the port side and there's one over there on the starboard. You notice they don't have any louvers in them or any, uh, any fins or anything like that, but they are something that you may think is related to the Webasto heating system and they're not. So they've just used the Webasto covers, which just pop right out, but up through these vents right here is actually access to the outside. So this is really just for airflow. So up on top um, of, uh, of this cabin space here, you'll see these two vents and they just uh, spin clockwise and anti-clockwise to close and open uh, respectively. And I'll show you that in a minute, but um, yeah, this is simply just airflow to the outside and that's all these two do. So anyway, we'll keep moving inside. Okay, so up here in the forward cabin, we have two vents, uh, one on the port side, one on the starboard side. Uh, right now, you'll see that they are actually closed. These are the closable louvered style up here. Um, this is a good idea if you're driving and all you're really trying to do is pump as much heat into that cabin space as possible. But if you want to heat down here, obviously go ahead and open these up and uh, heat will be diverted up here. Okay, so now we've successfully turned the power on and we're gonna let the system warm up because it does take a few minutes. I wanna take this opportunity to quickly discuss uh, the fuel that's being used in the system. And there is alternatives there and also where the fuel is located on board. I'll take you out there and show you the difference uh, between a 37 and a 28 as to where the fill points are. And I'll also show you where the hot air exhausts out of the system as well. Uh, that's uh, some really important information to know. So before we go outside and have a look at that, uh, I will just talk about the diesel versus kerosene options that you have. Throughout the video, I'll keep talking about uh, this system as a diesel heater and where to fill the diesel. The caps all say diesel, but you can run kerosene through this system as well. And uh, in actual fact, it runs cleaner um, and better with kerosene than it does with diesel. The downside of kerosene is obviously availability and cost. So diesel is usually always available at any marine gas dock. Most people choose to run diesel through the system um, because of the ease and the price uh, point of diesel. But if you do want to commit to using kerosene, uh, by all means, go ahead and bring kerosene down to your vessel and uh, you know you fill up your system with that. The upside of kerosene versus diesel is that it will actually last longer in your tank and not gel or gum over the winter. Uh, kerosene is much more stable that way. So if you are using the diesel um, uh, system, then you do want to run your system regularly. Now, once a month is bare minimum. If you can get it going once a week, that's great. If you have an off season uh, where you just don't use it for a while, do try and make the effort to come down to your boat at least once a month and just run that heater on max for at least half an hour. Just get it producing hot hot air, uh, so you're cleaning those lines out. They're very, very tiny fuel lines. It's a very, very tiny pump, and the injection ports inside the Webasto uh, heating system is quite small. Um, and, you know, diesel doesn't do well in tiny orifices over winter. It can gum up. So for the diesel users, please go ahead and just do as much uh, uh, maintenance as you can that way, insofar as running the heater at least one, once a month. That's, that's, that's really as bare minimum for that. Okay, so now that I've talked about all that, we'll go outside on a 28 and a 37, and we'll look at those fill locations and the exhausts. So as discussed, we're going to show you where the fill-up location is on both an Axopar 28 and an Axopar 37. We are on the bow of a 28 right now, and it's, uh, it's just under this cushion right here. So you need to remove this cushion out of the way. I released the snaps a little bit earlier. And then we open this locker up right here, and then we'll see here's the diesel fill. It's great because you don't need any tools. You just lift this little flap and then spin counterclockwise to open it up. And then you go ahead and you fill your diesel. It is important that you put it in diesel <laughs> and not gasoline. Uh, that would be a big problem if gas went in there. So be very, very um, uh, cognizant of the fact that it must be a diesel uh, fill. The tank on the 28 and the tank on the 37 are actually the same size. You have a 20 liter tank on a 28 and a 20 liter tank on a 37. Unfortunately, they're not monitored by any of the ship systems. So you will just need to keep an eye on how much fuel you're burning or you know, take note of it. Uh, basically, you wanna fill up at every, uh, every time you fill your gas tank, you can top this up if you know you've been using it. 
Okay, something else that we should really discuss is the location of the exhaust ports on both the 28 and the 37 Axopar. They are in different locations, so we're gonna talk about both of those. We're still on the 28 here, and port forward side of the hull is where it's located. So this area here, is somewhere where you never want to hang a fender because you may melt it. Uh, the exhaust is extremely hot uh, and also you want to be careful about side tying or getting too close to other objects. If you're tied up to something and there's something in proximity to this area, don't don't run your heater or move your boat around or just you know make, uh, make some sort of um, change <laughs> if, if you need to turn your heater on just so you don't uh, run the risk of like melting anything or, or putting anyone's um, uh, safety uh, in danger. So 28 extra power, port side forward. Okay, so here on the 28, I just want to talk really quickly about where you would find the Webasto unit. Uh, the Webasto system is essentially two different components. There is the, um, you know, the all-in-one uh, heat exchanger unit that essentially has the fan and uh, the heat exchanging block, inlet and outlet ports, and the exhaust is hooked up to that. And then the fuel pump is usually sitting uh, very close by, but it's a a uh, separate unit. So you'll find them on a 28, you'll have to enter the head, and then there's a remo removable panel right here. I've taken it off today, just so we can have a quick and easy access to the location. So removing this panel, you'll find there's a bilge pump in here as well. Uh, there's a few other cables and things like that related to the, uh, the holding tank, but uh, there's also the Webasto unit located right in this location. So if, if you ever do need to uh, go and find the Webasto unit on a 28, then this is where you need to come to do so. Okay, so on a 37 XC Axopar, we're going to find the exhaust port located on the starboard aft quarter of the boat, just here in the hull. So you'll see it located right here. This is going to pump out that very hot exhaust, just like the 28. You don't want to leave anything uh, hanging over the side like a bumper or a fender or anything like that in this area, as it will melt it. It's, it's that hot. Uh, also, just be aware if you're side tied or if there's anything around this, this general vicinity, the, uh, the hot air from the exhaust does have the potential to create a very unsafe situation. So just be aware that every time when you run your Webasto system, that this area needs to be clear. Okay, so on the 37XC Axopar, it's actually on the totally uh, opposite side of the boat uh, than the 28 Axopar. In the starboard aft locker, you'll find the diesel fill right here. So much like on the 28, if we pull out this guy right here and do a counterclockwise turn, which sometimes can be a little tight, we can open it up and we can fill the diesel straight here. It is a 20 liter tank, just like the 28. And also like the 28, it isn't monitored. So just try and kind of keep a mental note of how much uh, diesel you've been using. But you should be using your diesel heater regularly, um, at least just to keep it maintained. So if you fill your fuel and you know you've used some diesel, not a bad idea to just throw some diesel in there at every fill. Keep it topped up. Okay, so 37XC Axopar, as you know, is where we are. And we have on the starboard side at the helm, the main control panel. And next to it, you'll notice that Webasto logo on this guy right here. If you're ever wondering what that is, that's simply the sensor that tells you, or is telling the computer, should I say, how warm it is inside the cabin. So when you're setting the temperature of the cabin, uh, this is how it knows to turn off and turn on to regulate that heat and, that, and, and keep it the temperature that you're looking for. Okay, so we're in the main menu of the interactive user interface here. So I'm gonna go through a few basic features um, and just show you how it all works. So the first item on the menu on all, all the way on the left-hand side is gonna be the timers area. So if you have your clock set, and right now we're using the 24 hour time and we have our clock set, 318, you'll see that you can put timers into this area. I don't have any set right now, but it's 318, so why don't we set one up? Uh, it is Thursday today, and we're gonna have a start time of 3.20. How's that? Why don't we make it 3.25, buy ourselves a little bit of time to 3.55, why not? Okay, we'll set it to boost, it's my favorite mode. 25 degrees C I think is fine. And then there it is there. So you, if you scroll left to right in the timers area, you can go back and add another timer. You can see the one you've just created. I have actually accidentally made it Friday, but that's okay. This is a good exercise to go back into it and change it to Thursday, because today is Thursday, and I'll go through and just save all those same things again. 
temperature 25 degrees. Okay, there we are. So I've just successfully edited an already existing timer. I've changed it to Thursday and it's going to kick in at 325 and it's going to kick out at 355. Obviously the 24 hour equivalent is 1525 and 1555. Um, no question there that that's going to be an afternoon timer. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and d delete them all if you like, or I can go in here and I can activate it. So if I select it, I can either edit it, delete it, or activate it. So right now I'm going to activate this one here, okay? And then I'm going to go back, and you'll see because I've activated that timer that's set for uh, 325 or 1525 in 24-hour time, there's a little T that has appeared at the top left-hand corner. That is telling me that there's a timer that's currently active in the system that I've that, that you know has been set. So if you're ever wondering what it is, you can always just go in here and just see which one is the active one. Right now, my option is now to deactivate instead of to activate. So I know this is currently the one that's uh, that's now active in the system. So I'll go back and I'll just leave that um, in the background there. Back out, back out. Okay, and then the next uh, couple of options here is we have heating, ventilation, and settings. So as we're talking here, you'll notice this has been uh, a white power button or it's illuminated with a white backlight. And that is basically indicating that the system is powered on, but there's no actual features or functions that are activating right now. There are two features that, um, that it has. One is to heat right here, and the other one is to ventilate. And we'll go through those one by one. So back to the heating mode here, let's open this up. And you'll see that it's got these three different modes uh, denoted by three squiggly lines. So one line is eco mode, and then there's normal mode, and then there's boost mode. So this is basically how much fuel is it delivering into the combustion chamber and how fast is the fan going to run. Um, the basic way to say that is how aggressively and how fast is it going to heat the area. So do you want it to do slow heating? Do you want it to do a medium heat or boost? Personally, I always just go straight to boost. I love it to just bring it up to temperature as fast as possible. And then you can set the temperature inside the cabin. As mentioned before, we have this little sensor right here. So whatever the temperature is right here is being recorded and it's being fed back into the computer. And that's how it knows how hot it is in here. So we'll set it to 25 degrees Celsius and then away it goes. You'll, you'll notice immediately that this white light flashed a couple of times and then turned green. When that has gone from white to green, that means it's entered into the heat mode. Um, you might think that red <laughs> should be the color it turns, but nope, it turns green when it's heating. Okay, so if you give it a few minutes, you'll notice that uh, the fan will start to ramp up and it will start uh, to produce uh, air. It'll be a little cool in the beginning, but then it'll heat up um, over the course of five to 10 minutes. Sometimes it may take as long as 15 minutes before you start getting really nice hot air, but it does take a little bit of time to do that. So the next feature I would like to talk about is the ventilation mode. So back to the panel here, I'll show you, I'll show you that one. So before we start ventilating, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that off. So the heating mode is now off and I'm now back to the standby mode, if you want to call it that. And then I'm moving my cursor over here to the ventilation mode and then I'm going into there. And the ventilation mode simply is just fan. It just runs the fan with no heat being produced at all. So when it says ventilate, it really is pulling air from outside the cabin and putting it into the cabin. So you have four levels of fan. Let's go ahead and choose number two and we select that. The duration can be set to one, two or max. So let's go ahead and select one hour, <laughs> I guess. And then you'll see that this now turns blue. The blue backlight on the power button indicates that it is in the ventilation mode. So the ventilation mode is pulling air always from outside. Uh, it's the same air that's being used when it's blowing it across the heat exchanger, um, hot kind of brick, if you want to call it that. There's an aluminum uh, brick where there's a combustion chamber inside. But if that combustion chamber isn't hot, it's still air. It just flows right over the unit and it just comes into the cabin from the outside. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn that off again. I'm going to hit that again. So the blue light goes from blue to white and then I'm again in the standby mode. There's a lot of settings in here. Um, I will just talk about one of them really quickly. If we go into one of them called Quick Start, this is gonna control what happens when you just touch that button. 
So right now, the quick start can either be set to ventilating on level two with a max duration, i.e. it runs forever, or a boost mode setting and heat with 25 degrees as your setting and a max duration runs forever. Let's select the heat mode because that's what you want. Okay, so it's just gone ahead and it started up um, probably because we've actually hit 325 and we did just set a timer for 325. Um, so that's actually why it's turned on. But now that I've set it from ventilating to heat on quick start, that means if I'm in the standby mode and I just tap that button at any time, it will go straight to a 25 degree boost uh, setting and uh, that's that's what I'll get. If I want this button to be controlling just fan, uh, then I can change that quick start setting and have it just run the fan instead. So um, if you want to control them manually, that's also no problem. You just go back into the menu um, and you can't get back there unless you turn the mode you're in off. Um, so right now that green light turned back to white and I cancelled my timed setting. The timer has now disappeared from the top left hand corner and I can turn the modes on manually. So boost mode, let's go 27, nice and hot and then away it goes, green lights back on. Okay guys, so that was just a shallow dive into the basic features there. Um, if you need to know more, I don't hesitate to uh, reach out to, to someone at Freedom Marine and we'll be happy to help you out. Or you can consult the owner's manual and there's plenty of information in there. So I hope that was helpful and we'll catch you on the next one.